Hi, this is Enyola. Welcome to the second video of the series Survival Analysis. So in this video, we're going to be looking at censoring and truncation. So let's just get to it. So in Survival Analysis, we are interested in measuring the time to event for a relevant exposure or observation. So there's this particular topic that needs to be understood if you want to build a very good survival analysis model which is called sensory so what is sensory sensory occurs when we don't know the exact time to event for an included observation so let's just give a scenario here. let's say we are the event of interest is actually cancer then the time to event is death we want to know when a person will die from cancer so like for some observation the time to event are not given or we don't know the time to event because like we lost the observation due to follow-up so that kind of observation are called uh actually sensor so we are going to be seeing examples to be able to, to understand fully what sensoring is so let's just go so in survival analysis there are actually two types of observation the first one is the event occurred and it was able to get measured when it occurred so for the particular observation we know the time to event then the second one is when we don't know the observed time that is we don't know the time to event of that particular observation this is actually the case of sensory so we have three types of sensory we have right sensoring we have left sensoring and we have interval sensoring yeah now so we are going to be looking at right sensoring so right sensoring is when we know that the time to event is greater than some value but we don't know the exact value so for example we know that a person died from cancer after 2009 but we don't know the exact day or time the person died from cancer so that particular observation is right censored so let's just look at this example so we want to estimate the survival time after the diagnosis of leukemia so we have two consideration here for right sensoring we lost the patient is still alive at the end of study that's like the first consideration then the second one is patient was lost to follow up so let's just look at it so this is the patient uh, observation here so patient we have three patients so patient a we know that uh, experience patient a experiences event before the study end so patient a does not need any sensory but if you look at patient b so patient b survives past the end of the study so let's say we start the study here let's say this is uh, the study time we start let's say 2000 and the end of study is let's say after 200 months then after 200 months patient b was still alive so that particular patient we call sensory data because we don't know when the patient survived leukemia then patient c withdraws from the study so this particular patient also will cause sensor in the data because we don't know if after withdrawing from the study the patient survived or not yeah so this is an example of right sensoring so let's look at left sensoring so left sensoring is we know that the time to event is less than some value but we don't know the actual time so for example if okay a good example is actually virus testing so let's say we want to test for we are testing a particular patient for COVID 19 we tested the person during uh january and the person does not have COVID. then we tested the person let's say by september and we discovered the person had COVID. we don't know the exact time the person got COVID. we just we just know that the period was less than a particular uh value which is like less than let's say four months but we don't know the exact time that particular patient got that virus so this is an example of left sensor for obvious reason if the event is dead the data cannot be left censored so like we can't have a death case for left censoring so this is an example here for left censoring so we have a survey of some women at 250 day mark when they had their baby so the consideration here is some women enrolled in the study we already had their babies before 250 days but we don't know the exact time so like we are taking a survey of women at 250 day mark which this is like when they give birth to their baby but like some people enrolled in the study after giving birth already so we don't know the exact time so this is an example of 
left sensory. Then we also have another case which is called interval sensory. So interval sensory is when we know that the time to event is between two values. So between let's say x and y, but we don't know the exact time. So let's look at an example here. We are going to look at uh, a COVID example. So the study is COVID-19 test from December 2019. So the consideration is here if we have the situation where we have performed testing on an individual at some point T1. So we tested the patient, let's say 2019, and the individual was negative at 2019. But then at some point, let's say in 2020, the individual tested positive. So like between the time, the uh, between 2019 and 2022, which the person tested positive, we don't know the exact time. So it's an interval kind of sensory. So we, we would just say like this person had the virus between 2019 and the particular date where we tested the person, but we don't know the exact time in which the person had the virus. So now we are going to be looking at truncation. So like censoring, truncation occurs when observation are included by virtue of their time to events. So like some observation in the old data set are removed because of their time to event. So we just look at an example. So we have two types of truncation actually. We have right truncation and we have left truncation. So what is left truncation? Left truncation are observation with short time to events exclu excluded from the main data. So like short time to event are removed from the old observation. So let's just look at an example of left truncation so this study is we are trying to estimate a survival time of animal neonates what are neonate neonate are just like an infant less than four weeks old or let's just say newborn child so like a study to estimate survival time of like newborn child so this is the consideration here so neonate with very short survival will likely be excluded from the sample so for example let's say like a particular animal gave birth and immediately the animal gave birth the child died so for that kind of observation we have to remove it from the data set because like we will not be able to use it to build a uh, our model so that's a that's like that's left truncation so that those particular um, samples are removed or excluded from the data set because of the short uh, survival time yeah so right truncation so right truncation occurs when the observation with long time to event are excluded. So we exclude long time to event observation from the old data set. So let's just look at an example. So this example here, we are trying to estimate time to development of AIDS from HIV virus. So let's just look at the consideration. So some entries into the study occurs only after the development of AIDS. So note that we are trying to like estimate development of AIDS from HIV. So like the study we start from, okay, people that have HIV, they want to see when those guys actually, like when the HIV turn into AIDS. So then we now have some observation in our data set or some sample in our data set that the the uh the patient only had eight we did not know the time they have like hiv so we have to exclude that kind of data set or observation from the old data set in order to be able to use the data set so this is an example of uh right truncation so that is the end of this censoring and truncation video thank you and stay tuned for the next one see you later